you're watching Black History Activity Books TV. My name is Nigel Oram. I'm the head teacher at Harper Bell Primary School in Birmingham. Okay, so I've been head at Harper Bell for roughly three years now. Prior to that, I was a head teacher of another school in Hansworth, um, Heathrow Primary School. And before that, I held different managerial roles at a number of schools across Birmingham. So teaching has always been my passion, my interest, and actually my true love. It's quite a, a, an interesting, unique school. It's, its history goes back 30 years. Its first format was as an independent private school, so fee pay. And then roughly around six, seven years ago, it changed its status to become what we call a voluntary aid school. Therefore, there were no fees, so anybody could come. But it's always been a, a Christian school, initially a seven-day Adventist school, but a very inclusive format. So we're unashamedly Christian in how we treat each other, how we educate our children. And that links very closely to the vision of our school, which is very much about your talents to aspire to a university education. We're very clear about a real drive for children to achieve academically. And we, are, we, we do that in a myriad of ways. We give children the highest quality of teaching, but also not just in the core subjects in maths, English, reading, writing, but across the board, so things such as music and sports. We have huge music departments, sports departments, because we believe that it's for us to identify what each child is talented and gifted at and push that talent. And by really focusing children, giving them a sense of achievement, but also the skills of resilience to know that everything isn't always going to be perfect. It isn't always going to turn out how you want, but you will continue, you will persist, and you will ultimately you will be successful. So our, our vision is very much a, a vision of where you will go to, and linked to our values, very clearly our values are love, learning, and laughter. Love being, again, we're very much unashamedly a Christian school. We will love God. We will teach how to love God. We will teach how to love each other very much see ourselves as British citizens and our rightful place in Britain. A link to that and also an understanding that we're in a school and every interaction has to be a learning interaction. Good or bad, we will learn from it. And that includes staff as well. I think the power point is laughter. We live in a society that sometimes demonizes children, young adults. Um, but we want to encourage children to be joyous, to be happy and in an environment that's safe. So we, we are very clear about our passions, but how we enact our passions. So what is it that you like about teaching? It's multifaceted. You have the relationships with children. Um, you see them grow. You see them grow physically. You see them grow intellectually. You see them grow into their own personalities and their purpose. And just being part of that and being able to support, shape, and sometimes really just helping that really gives you a buzz. It's a, it's, a, it's a really interesting job. Tiring, testing, but I wouldn't do anything else. It's just wonderful to see how they've moved on. Many have gone to university, many have families of their own, and just it's almost that, that acknowledgement that you played a little proportion in their life. It, it's really rewarding. Can you tell me about some of the struggles that you may face being a black head teacher? Is, does it come with any stigma? Is it in a certain light or is it just maintaining it? It's a very interesting question because I've been a teacher 19 years now. And my first couple of years, I was supported by a really visionary head teacher. Um, he very much pushed me along my career path. I always enjoyed teaching and so I was actually quite good at it when I was in the classroom. So promotion came quite swiftly. But for me, I don't like the concept of me potentially being one of only a few black head teachers. That speaks volumes. We live in Birmingham, 1.2 million people, a significant majority or a significant minority um, of our children are black, African Caribbean, Caribbean, Asian, what other descent but we are not truly representative in terms of senior leadership roles. That I see as an issue because ultimately we need to be in positions where we have a clear mandate and a clear direction in how we support, set policies for our children's learning. And if we're not in senior leadership positions, if we're not part of governing bodies, 
then clearly our voice has not been truly heard or representative. So that is an issue. Um, and I think it's, two, it's twofold. Yes, there's institutional racism, but also there needs to be an understanding of that you have to put yourself in a position. You have to make sure that you're a qualified teacher. Yeah, and, and I'm not berating teaching assistants or mentors or any other African Caribbean yeah, who, who take those roles because they're important roles, significantly important roles. But there is a, too much of an overrepresentation in those roles. Yeah, we need to make sure that we're teachers, we're senior leaders, we are then head teachers. So therefore, we are have. A significant body to say okay we're qualified we're ready to take on those those positions it's for us to put ourselves in those positions and for us to be persistent as well nothing in this life becomes easy it doesn't it's not, it really doesn't i can't say life has been easy but again my christian faith determines that yeah i, I put god at the center of my life and fundamentally I, i'm reassured of the outcomes on the back end of that how important do you think it is for young people to see to see positive role models in the community, real people such as yourself? What do you think that does to the mind of young people when they're growing and how important is it for them to see that? I flip that slightly and say, I think it's what, 2019 and we're still having to have those role models. It should be the norm. We've been in this country, what, 70, 70 years, so we shouldn't have to be in that position where we're picking out, oh, Nigel's a head teacher, wow, or a good friend of mine, Paula Osborne's a head teacher, wow. It should be the norm that it isn't. Talks to me about where we are as a, as a group, communities and institutions that we're in. And yes, I, I will always aim to inspire anybody I come into contact with. That's, that's my nature. I'm a head teacher, I'm a teacher, I'm a motivator, I'm an encourager. That's what we do as, as, as teachers. But we need to be beyond that now. We need to be more than just role models, supporting financially. Yeah, we talk about uh, significant parts of our, our communities where there, there are issues around finances. Who are we, what and how are we supporting our young people to go to college? Yeah. Doing things like bus fare. Which it's easy as that. How are we supporting them? How who's then supporting them in terms of university? Like university fees of nine thousand pounds per year. That will turn off huge sections of our communities straight away. So what's how are we coming together as a collective in terms of uh, funding, identified scholarships uh, as a collective to really lay out the path for our young people to follow where it now becomes a norm that we've got a chain of people coming into education, chain of people coming into different practices, be it the medical practice, be it um, I don't know, the legal practice. So these things don't just happen. There's a systematic process. We want you to become this. You want to be, so we are going to support you to come into being as well. So I think the more needs to be a more strategic approach and also backed by money on a shame we have. We need to be investing. We need to be financially investing in our young people. What are some of the, the things that we could do to kind of to kind of aid that situation? We need to be in a position. We understand these things have got to be more than us individually. If I was to give a thousand pounds to an individual. My investment is in that individual. It's not that I'm going to get anything tangibly out of that in terms of £1,000 back or £1,500 back. It's not going to happen. So we've got to go beyond the concept and say, yes, this is us financially investing. So that is a, a change of mindset. So we have to find groups of people who have that same mindset, say this is a, a, an investment beyond a financial investment. Moving on to Black History now, why do you think it's important for young people to learn about their history and for young black children to learn about black history in particular? I have a problem um, with the concept of black history in an odd sense because it, it taking it out of history, you almost disassociated it 
and making it quote unquote something that's studied away from everything else. So Black History Month, and, and don't get me wrong, when it's, it's in an environment when there's nothing happening, Black History Month is a starting point. But we're now again in a different time, a different space, and therefore it's fundamentally part of who we are that we should be, that all children, no matter colour, creed, religion, should be learning about all histories and the impact it's had universally. And so doing that in a, in a format that is part of the national curriculum will serve so many different outcomes in terms of this concept of community cohesion. If I have shown some understanding of where you're coming from, I can understand how you think, your vision, your values as well. If I have no idea of where you come from, ignorance takes that vacuum. And when you have ignorance at place, then you have the issue with more severe issues you see in Britain and across the world. Black history as an entity I have a problem with. Black history as a part of the wider concept of world history has to have a significant place because our black history and more specifically African history has some of the major founding pillars of, of society, civilization. Talk obviously about Egypt, you didn't talk about Ghana, Mark, you, you can, they just roll off. So you're not having to go deep, it's just there, it's just taking the effort to go and find out. To so start from young, giving a clear indication of what the world's about, the significance of different cultures, creeds, and I think you make for a better potentially civilization. I definitely believe that it gives children firm foundations in who they are. How important is it that children know themselves? Again, I'd say it, it's, it's, it steps back to making sure parents know who they are as well and aren't permeating, permeating some of the misnomers they were given at school as well. So it's twofold, make sure you, you have parents who are truly understanding who they are and what their culture is about and then making sure they're giving their children the positive messages because the, the, the greatest teacher in is, is your parents, is your mum or your dad. You will send your children to school. But fundamentally, what mum says and what dad says supersedes the teacher. Sometimes we have quite negative representation uh, of our own culture by ourselves. Oh, we're this and we're that and we're this and we're that. And children hear that and they absorb that. So making sure that our parents are well informed and then giving those positive messages to our children. The interesting thing, I went to um, the uh, National Museum in London and you go to the African section, it's absolutely amazing. It's where it's obviously in the basement because, you know what I mean, you can't be on the top, you've got to be in the basement. The Egyptian section is it with the African section. It's the Greek section. It's totally away. So, is the continent of Africa and um, from last time I looked, Egypt was in Africa. So those misnomers that parents have to be aware of and talk to their children about to set the scene for that. So the education of parents is, is a huge thing. Huge thing. Um, but yeah. So in terms of the books, what do you think? I think that the, just the way they're illustrated, the front covers, they bring uh, a, a life to the actual title as well. And in a way, as, as well, clearly there's been a, a lot of thoughts behind it being a visual stimulus for uh, learning as well. So the text is obviously accessible alongside the activities. So you've got things like, like word searches, but also um, narratives that need to continue with. So that allows children to read uh, a paragraph, assimilate the knowledge and then apply the knowledge. So it gives you a, a nice insight to lots of the key features of 20th century um, black, strike African Caribbean history as well. I thought they were really good. And I had no problem to write significant numbers for the children in my school and just giving them, I think one of the things we tried to do is give children books that they can take home, read with their parents and start to really develop a love of reading. I have a, I have a library at home, 
list of books. I, I just buy books. Some of them I have never opened, but at some point I will get around to them. But just having books there, knowledge there, yeah, I think it's something that we need to really start children off at an early age. And there's nothing better than having a, a physical book. What made you start to the event and why do you think it's important for us to retain culture? On a number of levels. Me, when I see black people in the community doing something, not talking, I can't be doing any more talking. I really can't, I can't go into my living. You've got to be doing something out of meetings. So the mere fact I saw you and you've done something and it seems like it's well thought out, there's a direction, there's an investment. I will support. My thing is, I find something that you've got a clear vision and the purposeful nature around what you do. I will support it. So you coming in and setting up a store at Parents Day, yeah, it's an opportunity for you to meet parents, parents to meet you, and for a relationship to develop. That oh, okay, my child is interested. Oh, I've never known about that. We'll contact Andrew directly, and I think it's so important. We have communities that do so much better than we do, that they network so much more effectively than we do, and therefore we need to catch up. I'd say we're sometimes much more creative, much more visionary, but we just need to make sure that we enact. We need to do a lot less talking and, more, uh, and a lot more action as well. So me seeing you, I will follow you because I'm interested in what you're doing and interested in your next project. How, and I'm also quite selfish. How can what you do support me educating our children even better as well? So me working with you is, is not about me. Me working with you is about what I can, how I can use what you're doing to give children more information, more knowledge, more understanding of who they are and where they come from as well. And I think as well, it's, 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 you, you talked about role models. Well, here is, is a, a selection of people who have taken an idea, who are from African Caribbean background, and they're doing something with it as well. So it's a win-win.